Um, thank you very much for having me. And as your sponsor, I guess I should be saying thank you for, you, for bringing me here. Um, but you're right, this is an unenviable task at this time of day. I stand between everybody here and the cocktails and Tom Yoda, who's the far more elegant and dapper personality than I am. Um, but I am going to try doing some of some, summing up, and this is necessarily a very personal series of snapshots, really. Uh, the day started with uh, Noah Weinzweig, um, who Liz introduced. Uh, I didn't know Noah before. Um, I should do. He's based in Beijing and has been there for a long time. Um, he immediately told us that China is a rather unique and different set of circumstances to the rest of the world. He warned anybody who was thinking of going there uh, and making a film on the cheap that China is no longer cheap. Um, he also told us that it's full of traffic, uh, full of air pollution, and rules that are there to be bent. Um, I very much enjoyed his story about the bridge and the BMW commercial, not just because it was a, a good st story, a triumph over adversity story, but also because it was called the bridge, uh, which seemed to be an appropriate metaphor for, for the day. After that, we moved into the animation session where Stephen Kremen, who's no longer with us in this room, um, very quickly made the point that animation is perhaps a better bridge than live action is for, for reaching out internationally. Uh, I actually learned rather a lot in that session, um, particularly the, the way that the one thing that stood out for me was that he, one of the speakers said that uh, Western animation industry does the voices first, and the Japanese in animation industry does the voices last. Uh, and we were explained, we, we, le we learned why that was, that was the case. Um, there was an interesting and brief disagreement between uh, Denis Friedman and Tim Kwok as to whether uh, the, the rest of the world's animation industry can stand up to Hollywood. Um, Don't kid yourself, said Tim Kwok. But yes, said Denis, uh, if you look regionally and look locally. Uh, he pointed to the examples of both France and uh, Japan, uh, where local animated films are seen by millions of people. Um, paying spectators. Um, but Denis and Michael uh, Fukushima both pointed out that animation industry takes an extremely long time to build up, both in terms of the physical circumstances and also in terms of reputation. Um, 15 to 25 years were the figures that they threw out. Uh, I moderated a session then on cross-cultural movies, and I apologize because when I moderate sessions, it's all a bit of a blur. I don't remember very much, um, and it all comes out very messily uh, in my notes. Um, I seem to remember Michael Lake making a very impassioned plea for filmmakers within Asia to work together, and he happily plugged the Fly Network, which is helping youngsters in Southeast Asia do precisely that. Um, Sanjeev Lamba from Reliance uh, made a very convincing case um, to try and redress the balance of proceedings today. He said it had all been too China-focused, and he was going to talk about India. Um, and for a, for a man running a, a multinational movie business, I was very impressed with his plea for local filmmaking and his phrase uh, that you can't build a bridge from the middle. And there's that bridge metaphor all over again. I also liked his suggestion that a story needs to be well told. You can't just have a good script or a good joke. You actually need to deliver it. And I apologize. <laughs> All the panelists resisted my provocation about the, the use of the English language and uh, Hollywood script writing and, uh, as ass possible assets for the export of the Asian film craft. Uh, they seemed very happy to say that that's not necessary. There seemed to be a sense, I think, during that session that Asia is a region that, a region unto itself, uh, distinct from the US and Europe and, and even from Australia, uh, but also that there's considerable um, potential for intra-Asian filmmaking and consumption. Uh, that's something I'd like to see more of. Uh, I'm not sure that yet we've fulfilled our potential of watching each other's movies within Asia. Uh, we were also told that there's, there are sub-regions within Asia. Uh, I think Sanjeev likened India alone to Europe. He said it's so diverse. Then, after networking 
busily through the Shangri-La lunch, uh, we came back to a really exceptional case study, um, not just because we had Keanu Reeves and Tiger Chen in the room in person, but because Man of Tai Chi is a rather unusual um, set of circumstances. A Hong Kong, Chinese, US co-production, made in Chinese predominantly, um, but very much from a Hollywood style. Um, I was rather entertained by Keanu Reeves. Uh, 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 you know, here he was sitting probably in this chair uh, as a superstar, talking like exactly like a regular film director, regular film producer, dropping names and technical terms at every possible opportunity. Well, if his acting career fails, there's a new role for him. Uh, we heard from Lemore Sivan about the tricky or not so tricky process of getting through Chinese censorship. Uh, and I loved her repeated message that if you want to succeed in China, you need to show up. You need to be there, show face. I think that's a message that is, that is very relevant. Um, I was also pleased to hear about the absolute normality of putting together a contract with China Film Group. I think that is something that she, she suggested was rather easier than many people might imagine. You know, there, there is, there is the, the, the ability there to cross collateralize and, 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 and see real money. Um, the other superstar on that panel appeared to be Tom Quinn, uh, who discussed his premium VOD model, um, suggested that the future is already here. And at the end of the session, I think he was as mobbed as, as Keanu Reeves. Um, I was, that, there was one other thing that, that tickled me, but it's not, probably not important, that when, when a film doesn't do quite so well, uh, it's, it's easy to blame the distributor, particularly if that distributor is not in the room. Uh, Limor also pointed out the, the, the importance of social media uh, in the Chinese film uh, releasing uh, hierarchy. And if you haven't heard about that one, I think you're gonna hear an awful lot more about Chinese social media. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, and uh, as someone said to me the other day, it's actually way bigger than the film industry. Uh, then we had Johnny Toe, and I'm no need to recap him. He was here uh, sitting in these chairs just a few moments ago. Um, I, I did enjoy his, his explanation of where he got his movie making style. The idea that he spent three years sitting behind the movie screen without subtitles, watching Western films back to front was, was rather, rather strange. Um, I'm going to finish here with uh, just a couple of pullouts um, from my session again. pierre Ange Le Pogam said something uh, that I thought was very relevant, and it kind of follows on from Johnny Toe. Uh, Johnny Toe, his, his last words were uh, about, uh, he, he warned that there may be another economic crisis because we're all so greedy. Um, Pierre-Ange Le Pogam had, had told us um, that for the, the, the business underneath the film industry that, that needs to be healthy in order to foster and, and, and cultivate the art. And I'm going to try and finish on an optimistic note while we're talking about economics. Um, Sanjeev Lamba said something that I very much agree with. He suggested that overseas interest in a culture follows a country or a region's economic development. And on present trends, I'd say Asia's economy looks set to continue to expand. And if that's right, the outlook for the Asian film industry should be an optimistic one. Thank you. <laughs>